Let's do example one on page 152. And let me just read it. It says a trunk weighing 562 newtons is resting on a plane uh, inclined at 30 degrees above the horizontal. Find the components of the weight force parallel and perpendicular to the plane. So here's what's given. Uh, we've got a trunk that's on an inclined plane. It looks like this. And they say that this is the angle of incline, and it is 30 degrees. Now, again, the angle of incline is just how far this has been rotated up from the horizontal. Okay, that's our angle of incline. It makes sense. Okay, and here's the trunk. And it's just uh, at rest there. And, it, you know, we've got gravity uh, pulling it down. And what we want to find is, it says, uh, find the components of the weight that's parallel and perpendicular to the plane. So we want the weight components that's parallel to the plane and perpendicular. to the plane. Okay. Now let's uh, so let's do that. Now I'm going to go a little bit beyond where this problem called for because it's going to lead to what you're going to do in the next problem uh, anyway. Uh, you take let's draw a free body diagram of this guy. Now, it's not asking you to draw a free body diagram. You could have done it without. But I'm just going to I'm just going to do it anyway. Um, here's our weight vector. This is uh, and it says that it's 562 newtons. So mg equals 562 newtons. Oh, I didn't put that in the in what's given mg, the weight, is equal to 562 newtons. <clears throat> now, uh, of course, there's a normal force supporting it like that. We'll talk about that later. But we want to know, we, we want to take the weight, which is a force, and we want to divide it in, up into components that are parallel and perpendicular to the incline. So now when you draw a free body diagram, you should really only draw the object. So I'm just going to very lightly kind of show the incline right here and um, look the weight is pressing straight down like this but notice that I can break it up into components that are parallel and, and perpendicular to the incline that is some of the some of the weight is being is pressing into the incline like this and some of the weight is pull, trying to pull it down the incline, like that. So notice that parallel to the incline, which is like this, so this is the component that's parallel to the incline, is perpendicular uh, to the component of the weight that's perpendicular to the plane which is what this is. Now, here's another thing that I think will be very easy for you to see if you just really pay attention to, to this picture. Here's our angle of incline theta. And what I want you to see is this, that the... Oh, yeah, I'll just use the pencil here. That the... Um, Here's, my, here's the weight vector represented by the pencil. Um, now, this component of the weight got rotated by 30 degrees. If this is, if you rotate the um, object like this, 
this component of the weight rotates the same amount of angle. Oh, my hand's in the way. Sorry, let me do that again. If this is 30 degrees, like that, then this is 30 degrees here, like that. So if this is theta, then that's 30 degrees in there. Does that make sense to everybody? I'm going to demonstrate it again, but I can't do it with the document camera. So um, here in a bit. But just accept for the fact for right now that if, if you rotate this up, I mean, look, what if it's laying flat on uh, the surface like this? What if there was no angle of incline? Your weight would go down like this, and all of the weight is perpendicular to the, to the plane, isn't it? Because it's on a horizontal plane, and the gravity is straight down. But now we've rotated this up by 30 degrees. So only this part of the weight now is, now, now here's your, your perpendicular component. Only part of it, only part of the weight is that perpendicular component. And what is that? Well, this is the adjacent leg of a right triangle. How do you find the adjacent leg of a right triangle? Here's, here's your hypotenuse. The hypot here's a right triangle. Here's the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the weight. So the adjacent component, the adjacent leg of that right triangle is the hypotenuse mg times the cosine of the angle. Right? Cosine means, you know, adjacent over hypotenuse. You solve for the adjacent. It's the hypotenuse times the cosine of the angle is this. Well, what would this be then? This is the opposite leg. So that component is mg sine theta. Look at that carefully. Do you have any questions on that? Does that make sense? Okay, this is critical. If this does not make sense to you, you are going to have to ask. Because if, if you can't do this, it's really going to be rough. So if, if what I've just explained doesn't make any sense to you, or there's part of it that doesn't make sense, you need to uh, speak up. Or, or speak to me later if you want. Well, now we just need to plug in the numbers. Here's the perpendicular component. It's mg cosine theta. Well, we know what mg is. It's 562 newtons. By the way, don't multiply this by g. It's already been multiplied by g. I mean, the, you've already taken the mass and multiplied it by g to get the weight in newtons. They gave you the weight. So if, it's, if they give the, you the weight in newtons, don't multiply by g. Just keep it that times the cosine of 30 degrees. And when you do that, you get your perpendicular answer, which is 487 newtons. And this is 562 newtons times the sine of 30 degrees. And that's going to be equal to, if you plug that into your calculator, you will get 281. Or just divide that by 2, because the sine of 30 degrees is, is 1 half. Now, let's talk about direction. It didn't say this in the problem directly, but in the solution, if you read the book, the solution is this. Let's make up the incline, the positive x direction. And and perpendicular to the incline is the y direction. Notice that this is trying to pull it down the incline. If I define up the incline to be positive x, this is in the negative x direction. And if I say up from the incline, perpendicular to the incline is the y direction, well, this is pulling down on it, so this really should be negative. And those are your answers. Okay. Yes? Uh, you know, if you didn't put the negative, based on, on, on if, if you don't look at the picture in the book, let's take a look here. This is what the book did. Um, if you just read the text of the problem, no, I wouldn't require you 
to put that negative or positive because you, you didn't define an axis system right so you don't have to tell me whether it's positive or negative but if but if you do have an axis system and you are going to in most of the problems then you really have to pay attention is it going is it in the negative x direction or the positive x positive y negative y that's really going to matter okay all right so that is example number one.